so there's really two there's really two ways that we could be wrong. The first way is that we are in fact in a new <laughs> in a new bull market, right? A new economic expansion. The second way we could be wrong is that the recession is later than we expect. So on the first point, what would change our minds? How, what would prove that we could be in a new expansion? It has to be lower interest rates. It really has to be lower interest rates. The the manufacturing economy, the housing economy, the you know the automotive sector, it doesn't work with interest rates where they are today. It doesn't work with five and a half percent Fed funds rate and seven percent plus mortgage rates for an economy that can only grow GDP at a percent and a half uh, in aggregate over the long term, right? So without lower rates, there is no durable economic expansion from here. So we have to see interest rates break first. What could draw up the cycle longer than we expect today? A variety of things. I mean, almost too many things to count, right? There's a lot of potential variability there. But I'll, I'll tell you one that I think about quite a bit, and it's that the cycle has been so, so short. You know, when when COVID happened, every you know, manufacturing companies, but everyone was forced to lay people off because obviously economic activity ground to a halt and there was a great deal of uncertainty. So there were mass layoffs, right? We saw the most abrupt increase in unemployment ever in the US and, and probably around the world too. And uh, as a result, the Fed and the Treasury and Congress in the U.S. sort of took out the stimulus cannons, right? And one consequence of that, one way of interpreting all of that stimulus was that the government and policymakers want companies to hire back all of those employees that they let go. So they let everyone go, they hired everyone back, and now, or just a few you know, months and quarters later, the Fed and policymakers are signaling the opposite. Wow, inflation is running too hot. We're going to hike rates as fast as we have in four decades. So now the Fed is signaling to these companies again, hey, you need to fire people. So, hey, you need to fire people. You need to hire people. You need to fire people again. And this is all over the course of, you know, three years or so. And there are logistical constraints to doing stuff like that. And there are also reputational constraints to doing stuff like that, right? If you're uh, running a business and you have a reputation for hiring and firing people, you know, within the span of a couple of years, um, it's not a good look reputationally. And so I think it's a possible catalyst for, manufacturing companies and other cyclical companies and just the corporate sector in general in the U.S. holding on to employees longer than they otherwise would. And look, that could draw up the cycle another three to six months. That could be the difference between a recession and, you know, starting in December and a recession starting in uh, July. And so that's not our base case. We have a bunch of forward-looking models and, and predictors and leading indicators that all suggest the unemployment rate, the labor market will really start to crack hard in Q1 of 2024. But okay. it's uh, it is possible. It's an edge case that we're, we think quite a bit about.